the man who commands a legion of soldiers every time he has a runny egg. Pray, Charles. The thing I really hated about school was having to play rugby. Being cold, wet and miserable while a bunch of sweaty sixth formers pummeled the living daylight out of me. And that was just in the showers. And then there was swimming. Did they teach you how to swim in the sea by making you pick a rubber brick off the bottom of the pool? Now, call me lazy, but if I fall off a boat, that's where the brick is going to stay, all right? Now, luckily for me, games now means robot wars. And it may be just as brutal, but at least if I forget me kit, they don't let me play in me underpants. Oh, well, who's on the register this week? This week sees Greg's Berserk 2 at number 24 in the rankings against Invertebrat and the Creature. But first up, Gemini the 8th sees a brilliant creation against Tornado and Caterkiller purring in the pits with Jules. Shouldn't you be going? Oh. <laughs> That's not my thing, Tornado. Ready for the melee. Caterkiller, fabulous looking team. Now, are they purring? Because these cylinders here deliver 130 stones worth of upward thrust. I don't know. <laughs> this is bulletproof. Good luck. The Tornado team are very interesting. They're all engineers. Dave here chases storms. He's a storm chaser. That should be the title of the movie, the storm chaser. Awesome. And uh, you've got a very powerful machine here, which can pull a land rover. Land rover, no problem, yeah. Fabulous. And the Tornado, of course, destroys everything in its path. The Gemini team. A first for British Robot Wars. Here we have, long awaited, I might add, a cluster bot. Talk me through it. Well, cluster bot, it's um, two separate parts which go into the arena as one machine. And then when we start to fight, we separate. Like so. They're two separate machines. When you start to fight? Yeah. So you can't actually attack as a, as a single unit? No, we can't fire the weapons when they're together. Because they go all in the They're Achilles heel. So the, each, each machine is equipped with a lifter which can lift 250 plus kilos. Um, as long as the arm survives it. Right. And they're also gyro stabilized, so they're very easy to control. Excellent. But you come in, you weigh in as a single unit, don't yes. you? So each of these obviously is half the weight of some of the other robots, so easily flippable. But you've got the self writing mechanism. Self writing, yeah, the, uh, the lifter doubles as a self writing mechanism. So all you've got to really think about is uh, avoiding the pits, I guess. Pits, yeah. <laughs> pits. We shall see. Time to engineer some chaos. Let the wars begin. <laughs> Ready to whip up a storm through its industrial motor power. Fixed spikes provide the teeth of the gale, a steel and polycarbonate body to withstand any buffeting. But after the storm, perhaps the doldrums. Hi, I'm Andrew Marchant, and this is our robot Tornado. These are my team members, Dave Gamble and Brian Moss. Tornado is powered by two 24 volt 750 watt motors, but we overrun them to 36 volts and we gear very low. So we've got a lot of power and a lot of acceleration. In fact, we've got seven brake horsepower, which we think is the most power that any robot's ever had. From Adelston in Surrey, Caterkiller. Trundling on rubber tracks, will the Caterkiller butterfly away from opponents? Spikes on the lifting flipper give the killing edge. They think they have a Cater's nine lives, but then Caterkillers eat leaves, and this could leave early. Hi, I'm Steve Williams of Team Cat. This is our robot Caterkiller. It's powered by two 800 watt motors, Lexan and Macrolon bodywork, same as used in the screens to protect the robot audience from uh, flying debris. It's powered by tracks. Uh, it's got a lifting arm, powered by two 7,500 Newton electric rams. From St. Leonard's on Sea, speed number 8, Gemini. A unique and brilliant innovation, the cluster bot, which will split into two machines on entering the melee, fiberglass and Kevlar shells, pneumatic flippers, but Gemini, Kilolots and Leo, and lions rule our jungle. What lessons have been learned from their previous incarnation as Mace, Stinger, Stung, then they slam suicidal tendencies and they come back with similar power this time around. But in the semi-finals against Chaos 2, they were flipped. They couldn't write themselves. I wonder if they've improved on that this time around. Well, we're Team Mace, which is our robot Team Mike. Um, it's a heavyweight cluster bot, which means it goes into the arena as one machine, then we split into two and fight as a team. Um, these machines are equipped with a high-pressure a lifter which can handle about 250 kilos and also both machines are capable of self-writing. Roboteers, stand by. 
Caterpillar with the lifting arm, Keith Williams, sister Julianne and girlfriend Georgie Reed. Tornado, work colleagues Andrew Marchant, David Gamble and Brian Moss. And there's Gemini, Shane Howard, Brian Fountain and young Daryl Howard. Three, two, one. Watch for the split. There straight away. The twins break up. Sisters of mercy or daughters of doom, Gemini. Spinning around the arena floor immediately. Difficult to keep track on them. For the rest of the competing robots and the house robots. How do you close on one robot when suddenly it becomes two? Tornado on the attack, meanwhile, on Caterkiller. Caterkiller really in the midst of everything at the moment. Traditional wedge shape. In goes Tornado. Lower, flatter. Very little ground clearance on Tornado as it comes slamming in on the attack at 10 miles an hour. Can it get a flipped up and over? Has the lifting arm? Can it self right? I don't think so. Tornado with a little bit of a shove. Electrically operated that flipping lifting arm of Canakilla from Adelson in Surrey, but at the moment they've been shoved across the arena floor by Tornado. The boys from Huntingdon doing their stuff here. On Canakilla, the tail hangs limp at the back of the Canakilla. Oh, in towards shunt there. Into the CPZ, the corner patrol zone, and down comes Shunt, great axe blade, right into the mechanical guts of Caterpillar, which really doesn't make the best thinking. Out comes Shunt now, there's part of the twins there, Gemini, and he'll lunge! And a great attack as well, from the pneumatically powered flipper, can flip up to 250 kilograms, and surely here Caterpillar's done for. Meanwhile, on the attack on Tornado there, the twins, Gemini, a and B together. Now Killalot has pinched Caterpillar, which surely is doomed. Gemini under attack. 80 kilos of Caterpillar being dragged across the arena floor, though, by Killalot. Killalot, Caterpillar, barbecue. Oh dear. Tornado, meanwhile, puts the wind up shunt. Only a little bit. Well, not a little bit. Look at that. That's great power from the Tornado team. Meanwhile, Caterpillar, they know they're out of it. Shut onto the great arena. Pick it out of there very quickly, House Robot. We don't want to see you doomed. Caterpillar's about to be doomed. The Gemini bots are spinning madly all over the place. This is bamboozling, bewitching stuff from Gemini. Tornado comes back in as stubborn as a Capricorn as the Geminis fling themselves around the arena. Caterpillar immobilized, dead. Long, long time ago, slammed against the arena. Well, there's no light. Oh, the tails come off. Cata, no tails. And there they are. They know they're out of it. The Caterpillar team. Meanwhile, ooh, dead metal. In goes the great circular blade of dead metal. Oh, tornadoes in the pit. They think they're still in Caterpillar. I don't think they are. I think they were mobilized a long time ago. I think it's Caterpillar that have gone here despite their celebrations. We'll wait and see, of course, but I think they've already gone. I think Tornado are okay. Am I right? Gemini, magnificent, man. superb. Whoa! What a fantastic fight! But Caterpillar goes home with his tail between his legs. A couple of sad pussycats here. Caterpillar, you're out. How do you feel? <laughs> very, very sad. Took some good damage, though. See the positive side, you know. Nice war wounds. The house robots just didn't lay off, did they? No, we got thrown around a bit, didn't we? Yeah. Now, what about this arm? 130 stone of pressure I was looking for. What happened? Did you use it? We, we sort of got it halfway up, and then Kill a Lot took a liking to it. And he just bit down on it, and <laughs> the power in his pincers are quite awesome. <laughs> it's very scary. Very oh, dear. Scary. <laughs> but back for more carnage at the next wars, we hope. So. Yep. Excellent. Well, we hope to see them back, but uh, for now, it's TTFN for Caterpillar. Gemini and Tornado go through. Next up, Berserk 2, seeded 24 in Berta Pratt. We've seen them before, and the creature. In the pits. How grotesque is that? This is the creature. Which is giving me nightmares. What about you? It didn't give me nightmares because I hide from it. <laughs> <laughs> Smart lady. How long did it take to build? Three and a half months. Ooh, and that, believe it or not, is a wheelchair. All the main parts are made from one wheelchair, mangled and thrown back together with lots of blood and gore involved. <laughs> Creepy. The invertebrate team. Obviously, it works both ways up. Works every way, which way one would flip it. Rotating bludgeoner here. 
Give us a flash. Ooh. Ta da! How fast does that go? 2,000 bits per minute. Lots of stored energy, energy of around about three rifle bullets. Oof. Ferocious. And round the front, this is actually the front, which is another key tactic of this. Everyone thinks it's going to work the other way, but it doesn't. This is the front. We have... We have our weapon. Here's our mascot, Inverto Rat. Yeah. And this is our main weapon. It's a, a pneumatic-powered flipper, which we can lift up to this position to get over obstacles, drop it down when we're approaching the enemy, and then when we're underneath them, these two arms separate very quick. Bang. It lifts about 100 kilos, 16 and, and a half stone. 16 and a half stone. Whew. It's just a little bit more than me. And back for more mayhem, we have the Berserk 2 team. They are old favourites of Robot Wars. They lost, unfortunately, to Hypnodisc in the last wars. Ugh. How how upsetting was losing to Hypnodisc? Yeah, <laughs> Horrid. Not fair. Hypnodisc will be back at these wars. And um, you have got an incredibly powerful axe here, haven't you? Which apparently will go through this with no problem at all. And uh, judging by your competition, I think they're in with a pretty strong charge, guys. Good luck. From Woking in Surrey, Invertebrat. The rotating bludgeoner sounds RS, robot sexy. The pneumatic flipper needs to be effective in the last wars. They had their mechanical problems. They have been updated, but from the scrapyard, back to the scrapyard is a possibility. In the last series, they certainly put a spell on the witch. Flipping arm was working there and against the Terrapin. Condemning them back to the pond of Robot Wars low life. But against the Beast of Bodmin, electrical mechanical problems. That was the end of their run in Robot Wars. What improvements have taken place this time around? Hello, I'm Peter. This is the team members, Les and Elaine. We're Team Bratwurst Designs, and this is our robot, Invertebrat. Invertebrat is powered by batteries and by compressed air. The batteries work the main drive motors, which are two wheelchair motors. They're 24 volt motors running at 36 volts. They also power the rotary weapon on the back, which uh, we call a bludgeoner. It's a high energy, high inertia device running at 2000 RPM, which will rip the shreds out of competing robots. At the front is a pneumatic actuator, which is a pair of flippers, uh, which have a lifting force in excess of uh, 100 kilos. At the moment, they only have to lift our team mascot, which is Invertorat. From Rill in North Wales, the creature. From the Tun Turren team of the Last Wars, 10 people built it, mechanically operated forklift, the wheels from a go kart, the creature from the pit. Well, from Rill, and really gruesome. Really gruesome. Really. It was a horrible appearance for Tun Turren, also, and a horrible performance. Never got going, the house robots close in, shunt on one side, Matilda on the other. Like a pack of hyenas and no laughing matter for Tun Turin. Surely they can do better this time around. Hello, my name's Mark, and this is our robot, the creature from the Black Lagoon. This is David, and this is Elena, and we're representing Grill High School in North Wales. Our robot is driven by two 24 volt electric wheelchair motors, and our weapon is this cast aluminium lifting forklift controlled by an electronic ram here. Its top speed is about 10 miles an hour. From Huddersfield, seed number 24, number 2. They're good, very good. Only Hitler, they stopped them in the last series, made of steel, pneumatic lifting forks, and a hammer for the weapons. They could go mad. Berserk almost. Watch for this one. Very effective in the last wars. They dispatched Tuck's Revenge with little ado. And Alligator, back to the swamps. They were also the only robot really to stand up to the might of Hypnodisc. It wasn't Hypnodisc that beat them. It was a spike on the arena floor. They were unlucky last time around. This is our robot, Berserk 2. The weapons are an axe at the front. And there's also a forklift at the back. It's powered by wheelchair motors and it's faster than the last was. 
the body share, shape has been changed so that it can self right and we hope to win this year. Roboteers, stand by. Invertebrat with the bludgeoner. The creature with the good looks. Berserk 2 with all the form. The creature team from Real in North Wales. There, the Berserk 2 boys on the left in red. Three, Invertebrat all two, in black. One. Invertebrat is first to attack towards the creature, leaving the seated Berserk 2 team alone. Invertebrat already causing damage onto the, the creature, the Tunturin team of last time around, showing similar lack of mobility, really. Look at this quick penetrating attack on both sides. And, oh, well, the creature's body parts literally dripping away onto the arena floor. In comes the ref bot to have a closer look. Invertebrat clinging on to the creature there. The back spinning wheel rotating quickly now in comes berserk 2 the creature about as formidable as tantarum was turning hello you have to turn today not next week or next month a little bit more speed about you the creature wobbling mind you look at invertebrat i think they're stuck on the arena floor they pin themselves down there they have they're immobilized Oh, don't make any plans for Christmas. We'll still be here, and now Berserk 2, almost on plate. Will any of these robots survive this heat of death? The creature turns ominously, logs onto the attack, the invertebrate, and then their only chance is if another robot rights them accidentally, because they're immobilized, definitely. That's a pneumatic flip of the bludgeoner. Uh, has uh, impelled itself onto the arena floor. Look, the wheels are spinning, but it's going nowhere. The lights are on, but no one's at home. In comes Shunt. Invertebrat in trouble. The creature in trouble. Berserk 2 certainly not looking as impressive as it did in the last wars. This is a real tale of mayhem here. The ref bot, another look. What's going on? Is Invertebrat still alive? Well, the wheels are spinning, so the ref bot goes away to have another look. Elsewhere on the arena floor, in comes Dev Metal. Sparks fly. Dead men run at pinch and claw. Invertebrat. A little bit of life. Only a little bit of life. The creature under attack here from Berserk 2. Piggyback up on the top of Berserk 2. Drops down again. Top of the picture there. Little movement in the creature. Now, dead metal pulling Invertebrat across the arena floor. In comes Shunt with a great axe. Trying to penetrate the shell of Invertebrat. Picked up now, though, by Gillilot. The great lifting arm taken towards the pit. Could it be that the creature survives this and Invertebrat goes? You can see the creature buffeted in the back of your picture. Invertebrat torch down below us. <laughs> Splendid stuff. A fiery end for Invertebrat. I don't know what's happened to the rat. That's long gone. Rat deserts a sinking ship. They're going to get the sinking feeling any moment now. Yes, indeed. Pit, 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 pit. Lovely. That's it, 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 it. Invertebrat left totally spineless and is eliminated. Well, it's the worst place to go out in Rebel Wars, isn't it? Because we haven't even seen much action from you. No. And you didn't, you know, you didn't really get going. No, we didn't get a chance to get going. Very, very soon into the fight, we tried to flip the creature. We nearly got it over, but then we our flipper got stuck underneath us, and um, this part was underneath it, and we were jacked up on our own our own weapon. Eee. The wheels were up in the air, and we were stuck. We couldn't move this. The pipe got pulled out, and we couldn't close it, um, could and we couldn't move. We, we, we were hoping this. somebody would um, come and turn us over or, or pull this back out, but it didn't happen. And then, as you say, we got toasted. Um, but all that that just burned a little bit of insulation, the flame. Um, we've got a few bits of minor damage here, but nothing that we can't fix in 10 minutes. Ooh. 10 minutes and we could be back and fighting again. But... Well, that's Robot Wars for you, isn't it? That's Robot Wars. You don't get 10 more minutes, not a second longer, Invertebrat. You're out. Berserk 2 and the creature through then with Gemini and Tornado from the first of the battles. The seeded robots kept apart. Gemini against the creature and Berserk 2 against Tornado. The trouble with arcade games is they become addictive. Not with our pinball warrior tournament, though. Once is enough for anybody. Hey, let the trials begin! The pinball warrior tournament, a great test of driving skill and control around the arena for various targets and points to hit to score. 
to reach the top of the leaderboard. And there, Spawn and Scutter, proud, 245 points, a magnificent run, Spikosaurus bottom so far. Still, so many good machines to come, though. Who's up next? From Southampton, Attila the Drum. Funny rider. Teenagers Tony Knapp and Aisha Knapp from Nodeswood School with this drum of a machine. Runs on 24 volt motors, up to 15 miles an hour. We'll have to go some to beat Spawn of Scutter, though. Bernie Ryder at the controls. Bernie and Aisha there with him. Two, one, Normal tactic, head for the barrels. Five points per barrel knocked down. There goes the great mace and pickaxe weapon flailing away. Try and hit the spear into one of the pits. You'll pick up points as well. Up and over the bridge. That'll give you 20 points with a correct run all the way over. Spinning madly. Barrels flying off in all directions. Steady but not spectacular scoring so far. There goes that great big spear. Not down in the pit though. Specific targets around the arena edges. Now, Attila the Drum trying to attack this 50 point target. Guarded by Sergeant Bash. Don't think it scored there. Tries to take on the bridge. Askew though the attacking run against the barrels. Oh dear. Into the arena pit. Don't think they're going to get out. Less than 10 seconds to go. A dismal and disappointing run is going to end any second. Bashes against the spear into the claws of Killalot. And that was cool. Disappointing. And reflected in the score, only 40 points. Joint bottom with Spikosaurus. Look at the big guns to come. Firestorm 2, Gemini still. Spawn of Scuttleese, 245. Magnificent. It's not as easy as it looks, and it looks pretty darn hard. Right now, let's get back to the wars. The walking wounded and the fluid moving. Berserk 2 against Tornado. First up, though, the creature has to take on the very good-looking number 8 seeds, Gemini. The Gemini team, how has your cluster ball been performing so far in the melee? Uh, pretty, pretty well as we thought we, it would, except for the last fight, we had a little technical trouble with one of the arms, wouldn't, wouldn't fire, but hopefully we got it sussed. Then you've got two of them anyway. Should, yeah, should both. both exactly. Now, you... If one of your robots is immobilised, that counts as both of them being immobilised, doesn't it? So you're both, the responsibility is shared between the two of you, two drivers. Not just me anymore. Just a proper team effort, Exactly, it's brilliant. And you're going to be the lucky mascot, aren't you? Use our confidence. Yeah, we brought some confidence with us this time. Excellent. Good luck to you guys. Robotiers. Stand by. So, Gemini, worth double bubble, but double jeopardy. There they are, Shane Howard, Brian Fountain, young Darren Howard, and the creature with the Harmsworths, three generations, granddad David, son Mark, granddaughter Eleanor. Two, one, activate. Oh, nice splitting there. Not the words activate to come in with a pincer movement on the creature and immediately flipping the creature up and over. <laughs> the creature goes naked. Oh! Sheds its skin! <laughs> Gemini! Part of Gemini on the attack. The other part is hanging back. Another flip of the creature. Little Eleanor from St. Bridget's School. Loves her Harry Potter books. Would love a fantastic magical ending to this, but I don't think it's going to happen. David Harmsworth, her granddad. Love singing opera. Well, it's never all over until the fat lady sings. And the fat creature is singing now. Out of the arena. Look at that. Both of them flipping it up and over. Tremendous attack from the Gemini. Whoa, look at that. Oh, he nearly hit off camera. Watch out, Gemini. They're expensive. Well, the creature dispatched to the Black Lagoon. The winner is Gemini. Come on, lads. Hello, young lady. Hello. You got battered, didn't you? Your shell came off straight away. I know. Uh, and then they flipped us right out of the arena. I have, honest, 
It's such a powerful unit, they're Gemini. I know. I, I was walking up the stairs before with them, and I said, why? Because they uh, entered the wars last year with Mace. Yeah. I said, why have you changed your robot? That answered my questions. Well, it's answered all. I think it answered everybody's questions. Are you going to come back and do something bigger, badder, harder, yeah. and more ag aggressive? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, you haven't got a, ch you haven't got a choice <laughs> now. <laughs> Next time we'll take out the TV camera. <laughs> Next time we'll take the TV camera out. We're getting dangerously close to catching it. Ooh. Oh, that was a nice. little antagonism there. A little bit of antagonism. Nice to see you. Thank Hope you come back. Yeah, the creature. Well, as I said, that answered all my questions. That's what I did. And you saying you're going to build a bigger one? Yeah, a bit more powerful. That is, I mean, that is the most powerful thing I've seen. That like will look more powerful than Chaos 2, the reigning champion. Well, we've got two lifters. He's only had the one, so yeah. we had a bit of an advantage. But I still think he's, he's more powerful. powerful. Are you feeling quietly confident about this competition? The next one we're taking on. All right, then. I, re I reckon some of the smart money might be on you. Did you enjoy that, young man? Yeah. Destructive? Yep. Carnage? Yep. Metal mayhem? Yeah. Let's hear it for Gemini! We're sitting outside the Amina with Eleanor and Daryl here because Eleanor's robot has got stuck outside the Amina right there. Creature is uh, looking a little bit worse for wear. Huh? Is it he? She? Is it he or she? He. It's a he because it's horrid and <coughs> Daryl, I have to congratulate you, young man, because we haven't seen a bot like that on Robot Wars for a very long time now. I think he's a strong contender up against Chaos 2. Because you <laughs> falling a bit off there. Because you've basically got two little Chaos 2s, haven't you? Is that how you planned it? Did you look at Chaos 2 and think, ooh, that's interesting, we'll have two of those? Yeah. My dad went into the pits last year and asked about how they made it so powerful. Oh, and then rebuilt it. So he had a sneak preview and he's stolen the plans of George Francis. What do you think about all that? I think that's a bit mean. I think it's mean, but I think they're going to win, you know. I think they might yeah. do it. And they okay. beat your robot up, but it's okay because you've gone out with some strong yeah. competition. I think they'll go very well. Would you two like to shake hands for me now? Okay. Well done. Let's go back to the pits and see if we can get your robot out of there. <laughs> Little girl, a little boy, isn't that so sweet? Ah, the creature out, Gemini through, and next up, Berserk 2 and Tornado. Let's get back to mayhem, mashing, destruction. There's David the Storm Chaser. <laughs> Whipping up a storm here for Robot Wars. Hopefully so. Now, they have got quite a ferocious axe on their robots. They have indeed. They were uh, a little bit worried, but uh, having said that, we're hoping to push them all over the place. So, uh, that's, the, that's the strength. That's our strength. Go yeah. with the brute force. Absolute power and traction, yep. Power and traction. Brute force. Anything. <laughs> Good luck. The Berserk 2 team from Huddersfield are about to go into the arena. Looking quite tense. Biting your nails. Let's have a look if we've got bitten nails there. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently you had three weeks. You thought you had three weeks to prepare and you only had one week. <laughs> So everything's been last minute, but as long as the axe works, you'll be okay. Yes? Confidence? 50-50, not sure. 50 if if One thing to say to you guys. Good luck. Good luck. Do some damage. Roboteers, stand by. I thought Tornado looked very, very good in the first encounter. Zerk 2, a little bit sluggish compared to the last war. Three, two, one, activate. Good reputation against performance so far, and you see Tornado has started the stronger with the pneumatic spikes, the thick spikes as well, slamming Berserk 2 against the arena wall. Berserk 2 bouncing back against the ref box. Tornado again on the attack. And don't forget, should this go to the judges, they will mark high on aggression. Also damage caused, style, control. Berserk 2 trying to get the forklift, the rear of the robot, into play on Tornado, getting it in underneath Tornado. And the ground clearance of two and a half centimeters, Tornado. Berserk 2's going to have to go something here, I think, to beat Tornado. 
a surprise performance by the Tornado team from Huntington. They've done very well. All work colleagues. Promises to Robot Wars. Again, attacking Berserk too. Slamming Stuart Ford and Graham Kershaw's machine against the arena wall again. Look at this. Great power on the drive. Up to 10 miles an hour. Top speed for Tornado. From its industrial motors. A gear low. Very, very powerful machine. They told us that earlier on in the program. And Berserk 2 stuck on the arena wall. I think is in real trouble here. Splendid display by Tornado. Berserk 2 know they're in trouble. Graham Kershaw, there's a welder. And he's going to have to weld bits back on Berserk 2, I think. Then he lost to Hitler this last time around. They haven't looked as impressive this time. And Tornado backs away and leave the destruction for the house robots. They want Berserk 2 in the pit. They're going to get their wishes fulfilled. If Killalot can pick up Berserk 2 now as the Tornado team looks on. And Sir Killalot, with that great claw on the lance, picks up Berserk 2, carries towards the pit. And over the flame pit, which actually set fire to Killalot in the last series of Robot Wars when he got too close. This time around, though, causing damage to Berserk 2, the flame pit. And Berserk 2 into the descending pit of doom. Tattered and torn like extremes. Cease. Well, Berserk 2 hidden by Gale Force 10. Tornado go through. All that hard work, and you've got absolutely pulverised, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> See if I can cry. <laughs> well, the axe looked like a, a fairly severe weapon, but well, that tornado's a strong robot, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Next time, it's going to improve the speed and control on it. Well, we want you back next time. We want you harder, and we want you ba b better and badder. Ladies and gentlemen, Berserk 2. Cheers, guys. Now, what engine have you got in that? It's like a Ferrari. Well, it's all down to the fact that we use more voltage on our motors. Most people only use the rated voltage, and we run them, which is 24 volts. We run them at 36 volts, which gives us so much more speed and so much more power. But you're low to the ground, you're a nice compact robot, but the power and the speed, I mean, you were just like pulverized, it was like a jackhammer going in and out. Well, we're designed for speed and we're designed for traction, and that's exactly what it does. Now, how do you feel? Do you feel as though you're going to progress in this competition? Oh, definitely. <laughs> because it, I, it took me by surprise. I don't think I've seen something move that fast and hit that hard so far. It's like the Mike Tyson of the Robot Wars <laughs> world. <laughs> To bash. It's designed yes, to bash. Absolutely, yep. All right, yeah. well, stay clear to say a killer lot because you might just bash your back. Absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Tornado team, let's hear it for them. Well, Brian Moss with the long fair hair looked very pleased with himself, didn't he? Berserk two out, the Tornado boys go through, and what a heat final here. The mightily impressive Gemini against Tornado. Now, they're no slouches either. What's the definition of a Japanese eclipse? It's when a sumo wrestler's so big, he blocks out the sun. Well, it's time to do some blocking of our own in our sumo basho. Let the trials begin! Terminator's great run staying in the sumo arena for one whole minute means the only way it can be beaten if one of the remaining robots pushes shunt out within that given minute. But coming next, the reigning world and international champions. Let's see what they can do. From Bournemouth, seed number three, Razor. Three great competitors, Vinny Blood, Simon Scott, Ian Lewis. Razor against Shunt. The object to stay Real on that sumo basho arena floor. Three, two, one. Of course, now shove Shunt out of the arena. Oh dear, Razor's gone. Straight away, they had to go on the attack, really. Trying to force Shunt out of the arena and bang, bang. 
Razor. Can't come back in, boys. We may try. Oh, what are you gonna do? Bounce up off the rubber tires? Razor. Ron Gloucester, seed number 19, Pussycat. The machine of Alan and David Gribble, Robert Bettington as well. The circular blade, very forceful weapon, removed because this, let me get it, is a sign of strength and endurance. Roboteers, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. Stay on the sumo mat and also push shunt out. To win the sumo basho challenge, that's what one of our remaining contestants has to do, and it won't be pussycats. That's for certain. Retired, so to speak, from the sumo basho floor. In this way. A little shimmy by Shunt, delicate movement actually. Nice little dummy, drew on Pussycat, then got the great blade underneath Pussycat and bulldozed the kitty out of the arena. Out of the kitty tally up, well, sick so far. Razor down in 10th. Goodness me, they'll be disappointed with that, but look at Exterminator, the four minutes survive. Four robots to go in the sumo back show. You can smell the sweat up here. I think we better get back to the wars. The heat final. Gemini against Tornado. Gemini, the seeded robot at number eight. And you can see why, can't you? Devastating so far. Now, to get to the heat final, they actually fought together earlier to destroy Caterpillar, you'll remember. Tornado then crashed Berserk 2. An easy victory. While Gemini defrocks the creature. For a place in the series semi finals. Well, it's very tense here, and looking at the robots and their previous performance, I don't know who my money's on actually. We've got here sort of two baby Chaos 2s, have we not? Yeah, kind of. Which could be a formidable opponent. It could be. And Tornado, very, very powerful. Yes, indeed. That's what you're relying on. Well, we should be able to push them around because, of course, when they're separated, they weigh half of what we do, but we're still worried about that weapon. It's very powerful. It flipped us before, and it could flip us again, so we're going to try and stay out of the way. Can Andrew March and David Gamble, Brian Ross and Tornado stay out of trouble? Blow them away, says the message. There they are, hopeful. From some lemons on sea, seed number eight, Gemini. Fantastic machine, Shane Howard, Brian Fountain, and young Daryl Howard. Only 10, must be proud. Tornado. Gemini, replacing the series semi finals. Three, two, one. Gemini splitting immediately from the start. Now, each of those microbots, then, half the weight of Tornado, but still, each can flip Tornado up into the air, which makes it doubly impressive for me. Tornado, though, on the drive, slams one of the twins against the arena wall, and don't forget, as soon as one is out, both are out. Technical consultant Derek Foxwell and his team very, very strict on weights in this series of Robot Wars. But at the moment, Tornado is the heavyweight of this class, slamming in on part of Gemini, and I think impaling Gemini there, not quite impaled on the arena spike, but Tornado coming back in to make sure, and slamming Gemini, and I think half the robot is impaled on the arena wall. Can they get away there? If they're immobilised for longer than 30 seconds, that's it. And Tornado would be the winner. Gemini, the cluster bot against Tornado with a more orthodox look and I think uh, part of the cluster bot trying to get the other side of the machine the other twin off the arena wall flipping Tornado up in the air they're the Tornado team they all work together They're working together magnificently in Robot Wars and the twins helping each other out there as well trying to breathe life into its twin sister there but is it too late? they were warned if part of the cluster bot was immobilized for more than 30 seconds, they would be dead and out of it. Tornado, meanwhile, a clever game. It can work either side up, so flipping and tossing Tornado won't work. Will it go for the judges? What's the decision here? Very close. Brilliant final. Well, we've got a 
great controversy. The rules say that a cluster robot, that's a robot of two or more parts, after it's separated, if one of those parts breaks down for more than 30 seconds and is mobilized for more than 30 seconds, because it's only one robot, then it's out. So the winner is Tornado! Well, lads, it was an amazing engineering feat. But you were aware of that rule. Oh, yeah, yeah, they fit square and square. And, but, so it was a, quite a risky strategy, really, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what went wrong with half of it, then? Um, got rammed on that spike over there, and we think it's taken out either the speed controller or one of the batteries or something. See, when you've got two robots acting sort of independently of each other, you've got two chances of, of oh, yeah. going out, haven't you, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah we've got two, two big weapons as well, so yeah. it's two times more chances of getting thrown up in the air as well. So. Yeah. But you've taken it all in good spirit. You'll oh, come yeah. back, won't you? Definitely, yeah. Let's hear it for Gemini! Tornado! <laughs> come on! Well, you're through to the series semi-finals. That is a powerful robot, isn't it? It is indeed. Um, it wasn't an easy fight. That, that's a couple of damn good robots they've got there. Um, we lost a chain about halfway through, but that, by that time we'd all, already immobilised one of theirs. And it's, then, uh, it's just the power of the thing of yours, it's just, just so awesome. What's yeah. it like when you've got a fight? Like, you know, two separate robots at once. <laughs> it's difficult, it's very difficult. It's a very good idea, and it, we were just so lucky that we managed to spot, uh, impale them on that spike, and then if right. it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have got through, so. I think there's going to be a lot more robots like that in the future of Robot Wars, yeah, aren't there? Yeah, I think it's a very... Uh, Good idea for the future for people building out there. So good luck in the series semi-finals, lads, okay? Thank you very much. Well, I've heard a few wolf whistles and a good many fours. Because there's only good looking robots on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. <laughs>